the previous lecture, we are essentially looking at an example of a double operand instruction. We generally discuss the instruction format and indicated that the instruction, any instruction may refer to one operand or two operands or sometimes no operand also. So, three cases we saw. Specifically, after taking one example of a double operand instruction, that is an instruction which refers to two operands. So, for instance, this particular one, add is an instruction and it refers to the two operands x and y. And just for the sake of discussion, we assume x, the data x available in some register with the CPU and the data y available in the memory location. Okay? So, and then after taking this particular example, we were uh, in fact working out the series of actions that must take place. That is, in other words, the micro instructions involved in the execution of this single instruction. Right? So, this is what we saw. Now, this takes us naturally to the next step. What is that? We started with an assumption, right? X in register and Y in memory. So, naturally, the next step would be what are the various possible ways in which the operands can be referred to? In other words, what we are talking about is what are the different uh, modes in which we can address the data? Okay, that is modes of addressing the data. What is addressing? Just referring to the data. That's what we mean. Okay, modes of addressing the data. The same thing will always be will usually be called addressing modes also, right? What is addressing mode? Addressing mode is just the mode in which we refer or address the data. Now here we find in this example which we took the data x is in register. So, this particular mode of addressing is just called register mode. right? Then the second one, the data y is in memory, that is the second data y in memory. That means, we have to give an address of memory location somewhere. Now, we can talk about address of a memory location. Now, the CPU must place this address and then get the data. right? Recall what uh, was going on earlier. Now, for CPU to place that address, the address must be made available to the processor. Now, that address may be say in one of the registers of the CPU itself, some register or that the address can come as part of the instruction word itself right? and so on we can talk about. So, what are the two things I uh, introduce right now? One is I said the register, the register mode that is the first one. In this, the register itself holds the data. Right? Now, what is the advantage of this particular one? The advantage of this is where the register is usually part of the CPU. Right? And what we mean by register holding the data, the data is already available with the CPU, which means the CPU need not go elsewhere to go and fetch the data. It saves some time. Good. So, this is the very first one. Now, the second one as uh, given here, the data is in memory. So, we can uh, call this particular one as direct mode of addressing or direct addressing. Why do we talk about direct addressing? What we are saying here is the address of the memory location which contains the data is available somewhere directly. In the sense, the address may be part of the instruction or may be available in some register. For instance, if this address is available in a register, sometimes this is also referred to as register direct mode, because the register holds the address. That is what we mean. Okay? Now, what did we see here? Suppose this is a register direct mode, then 
what it means is the register holds the address and what is the previous one the register holds the data right the previous one is register holds the data and the second one is the register holds the address now from the register the address will be placed and the data will be got now that is one more step right whereas in this particular one the first one register holds the data the other one register holds the address and the address must be placed on the bus a bus activity must be initiated and then the data must be fetched into the processor for it to proceed now obviously when we talk about direct addressing there must be another one by which we may say indirect is it not direct immediately gives you the idea of indirectness indirection hmm? so what is the indirect mode indirect mode of addressing the data it's uh, the address is not immediately available that is directly available say in a register but the register holds something which in turn holds the address so it's somewhat like this suppose the cpu okay some register holds some register whatever it is okay now it's not necessary that the register must always hold but let us say the register holds some number 1000 and in the memory okay let's say this is 1000 the register holds the number 1000 and in the memory location 1000 let us say we have uh, uh, 1010 okay assuming 1010 so 1010 will be somewhere here now let's go back and see the first one register was holding the data in the second one register was holding the address and now we are discussing the third one it's indirect so register holds a number 1000 which holds a number 1010 which is the address okay so the whatever data that we are looking for is available in this location that's what this means okay instead of register holding the address as in the second case if it were a register direct addressing register holding the address register holds a number in other words this is also an address not that it's not an it's anything it's just a number it is also an uh, address so, uh, in other words we say register holds the address of address of data so that is what you say we are indirectly referring to the data this uh, particular thing is also called uh, deferred mode that is what is deferring deferring is postponing right so the address is not immediately got it is got after some deferring so there is one level of deferral register holds an address which holds the address of the data right now what happens let us just see in case the register holds the data as in first mode no problem cpu need not carry out any bus activity and it need not access the memory and so on it already holds the data in the second one the direct addressing if it were a register direct addressing we say register holds not the data but the address in which case the register will hold the address in this case it will rather hold 1010 that's what it means the third one the register is referring to it indirectly so register holds an address which holds an address of the data 
right. So, in this first one register holds the data, in this second one reg register direct addressing register holds the address of data, in the third one register holds the address of address of data. Now, what is the problem? If CPU holds the address in the register, no bus activity. If CPU holds in a register an address, then there is one machine cycle involved, right? For every, we have seen earlier, right? Instruction cycle consists of machine cycle. What is a machine cycle? Machine cycle is one in which uh, some bus activity is initiated to bring some piece of information, some code, whatever it is. Uh, to the CPU. So, in the second case, the register must place the address and get the data. Now, ha what happens in the third case? The register places the address, in the third case, the register places this address 1000 and gets into itself the contents of that location 1000, which is 1010. Then again, the register places 1010 over the bus and then gets the data. So, it is going to take more time. So, we are going in this particular manner, what do we find? We are finding that there is more and more calculation involved in getting the, what we may call as the address of the data. In other words, in calculation of what is called an effective address, there is more and more calculation involved. right. So, more time will be spent in calculating the effective address of the data. What is the final location? What is the address of it? We have to calculate okay, these three. Now, we can expand this particular one into what? Let us say the fourth mode. I am not following any specific order in this. right? The fourth mode we can for instance take uh, um, say <coughs> okay. I'll just call <coughs> call it as index mode. Sometimes uh, you may find uh, the same thing being referred to in different ways in different books. Okay. Index mode. What is the index? index is actually some number x okay and uh, there is some number x will be the index and uh, this x must be added to let's say some register contents okay some register will be having let us say an address okay some register has an address and then the contents of that register, what is that? That is an address plus x. You add that and that you calculate the effective address. So, the effective address is calculated like this. That is, we are assuming, of course, this varies from processor to processor, the way this mode is referred to. That is what I say different books, you will find different things, but essentially this is what it is. Now, let us go back. In this first one register holds the data, in the second one register holds the address, in the third one register holds the address of address. Now, what do we find? We find register holds an address and this x, where does it come from? It must come from that particular instruction. The instruction which refers to the way in which, what will be the instruction? The inst some instruction in which it refers to the mode. Okay? Now, it says that instruction will supply this value x, which is the index and uh, there will be some register, which will be used. The register contents plus x will be the effective address. Now, what have we arrived at? We have arrived at an effective address, which is something like uh, direct addressing, we have arrived at. Now, to this itself, you add one more deferral, indirect, right? Another indirection, you can do it. And index mode, right? 
Ah, incidentally, before we proceed, normally this uh, particular register will be called a base register. Okay, this R, okay, would be referred to that register which holds uh, some number will be called a base register. Now, why is it called a base register? You must be able to see yourself. What is the need for it? Because the insertion supplies a number x, when it is added to this, it will get the effective address. So, this is some base with reference to that. Okay, let us say the register is say 1000 and the index is 10. Okay. Suppose this base register, let us say this is the base register, it holds 1000 and suppose index is 10, then what it means is? 1000 plus 10 which is 1010. So, with reference to 1000, 10 locations away. So, this is the base with reference to this 10 locations away that is what this index, index is pointing right. So, 10 locations away it gives and because of this particular reason with reference to something then something away we say no. In other words, with reference to this by displacing. So, this will also be called the displacement. Okay, fine. Now, um, now base. Uh, in fact, that's why I said the different books will call differently. In some book, it may be just index mode. In some, they will call it as based index mode. Okay. Then, whenever we refer to base, sometimes this will be index will be called as displacement. Okay, something that is fixed with reference to which you displace and then get that. Now, that is uh, one point. So, with reference to base address, we also talk about the displacement. All right. Now, these are all different ways in which the address of data can be calculated. After the address is calculated, then the data will be brought in, right? That aspect we have seen earlier. Now, to this, we can have index deferred mode, right? What is that index deferred mode? What is deferring? We said earlier, it is not direct addressing, but indirect addressing. That is, in direct addressing, we are talking about address. In indirect, we talk about address of address. So, in index deferred mode, that is the next mode, let us say, okay, index deferred mode, then what you calculate as this, whatever you calculate is not the address, but the address of address, that is what it is. That is one more deferring, indirection is there. So, or the contents of register, that is whatever is that, or plus the displacement index, that is not the address, but address of address, one more. So, like this one can go on. Then, uh, to this we can add a few more things like uh, for instance, let us say, in all these things as you would have noticed, the register content is not disturbed, no, it remains the same. Hmm? The register content is not disturbed. Now, the next one we will disturb the register content, what is it? We would say, you calculate the effective address after that you increment the register, then that particular thing is called an auto increment mode, okay, auto increment mode. What is that? What are be the, <coughs> let us say, let us uh, take this particular one, the direct addressing. So, the register holds the address, okay. Now, in the auto increment mode, again the register will hold the address, but after the address is used, the register contents will be incremented. That is what the auto increment mode is. So, the register in the auto increment mode also just like in direct addressing, the register holds the address, the register holds the address after that address is used, 
what is that address? That address is the effective address, right? After the address is used to bring the data, the register contents will be automatically incremented. That is what this particular adjective says, auto increment. Automatically, the in, in, uh, contents of the register are incremented. We need it, you know, in some cases. Recall what we were doing while fetching the instruction. We are fetching an instruction or one byte of instruction, let us say. After that particular thing is used, the program counter contents are automatically incremented because it must point to the next instruction or next byte of the instruction we need, right. So, by putting the program counter in this mode, automatically it is achieved. Remember, go through the steps again, T1 and T2, whatever was going on. Okay. Uh, well, you can go on. Now, auto increment, deferred mode you can go to, right. That is, the register contains not the address, but address of address. And after fetching, the data from the address, the register content will be automatically incremented. Okay, you can go on. Now, the same way, when we talk about increment, we can also talk about decrement. So, the next is auto decrement mode. Right? In this, what is done is similar to earlier, auto decrement mode also the same way the register holds the address. After the address is used, the register contents will be decremented automatically. So, that it points to the previous location. So, in some cases, it is useful. And then I already said, you can have auto increment deferred mode, auto decrement deferred mode, one more step of referral. Good. Then, something else. Uh, yes. Uh, we said earlier that an instruction may uh, be 1 byte or 2 byte or 3 bytes. Agree? We had said that earlier. 1 byte or 2 byte or 3 bytes the instruction. Now, as part of the instruction itself, suppose you are passing on the address. It is possible, right? We have said earlier an instruction, let us say we have a 3 byte instruction. Okay, that is 1000. 1001, 1002. Let us say these three locations hold some instruction. Now, that particular instruction can hold the address as part of the instruction, right. If that were so, then uh, what is the difference? We said earlier the register may hold the address. Now, we are finding that the instruction itself holds the address. Now, since this address the instruction uh, what is it referring to it is referring to the opcode and also the two data if it is a double operand instruction two data so we are talking about address of data that is what we mean so the address of data is available as part of the instruction itself in which case we say that the instruction is available immediately right that is in the next location or second in this particular case second or third byte or third location. Hmm? So, that is the next uh, one. Now, this uh, immediate mode is not different from what? Immediate mode is not different from the direct addressing mode. In the sense, immediate mode, the <coughs> address is available as part of the instruction itself. And in the case of this direct addressing, what we are saying is the data the is referred to by an address and all along we are saying in case the address were in register this will be called register direct. Now, we find that this particular address is not in register, but as part of the instruction itself. So, this is not really different. Now, another uh, uh, interesting mode will be say uh, uh, yes, we had already seen, but uh, with reference to a specific register, we have to say 
That is in the case of index mode I was talking about base register and so on and then the index or the displacement. Right? In other words, you are referring to a data available uh, in some address with reference to a register. You are saying um, the data is available in an address which is let us say x bytes away from what the register points to. Right? So, this particular one is in fact giving us the idea that the data can be referred to in a relative way with reference to say some location with reference to some location relatively speaking say 3 bytes away or 2 bytes away or 3 bytes away or 10 bytes away well in this direction or backwards it can also be with reference to this say you can go back right. So, this relative addressing um, relative addressing is a very general one and uh, this is a specific example right. Now, in the case of relative addressing we have to know with uh, reference to what in other words related to what the address must be calculated right. Normally uh, in index mode a specific register may be used in the relative mode the program counter itself will be the register program counter what is a program counter pc it always holds the address of instruction right to be fetched or address of byte to be fetched the program counter always holds the address of instruction to be fetched so, this is a special case actually, right. So, you can see that relative mode is not very much different from index mode. Index mode is any register, relative mode program counter specifically is referred to. Because the program counter always points to the current instruction, maybe part of the instruction or the next instruction depending on which part of the machine cycle in an instruction cycle it is with reference to what the program counter points to then you say 2 bytes away, 20 bytes away, 200 bytes away right. Away means in this incrementing direction or decrementing direction both ways. So, <coughs> that is what it is. So, here normally in index mode uh, it is always in the your plus will be used in relative mode it can be either forward or backward. Okay, that's uh, okay. It's a question of uh, uh, appropriate interpretation. Now, we have just seen uh, some. Uh, we have got some idea about nine modes of addressing. Going back to our original example, okay, we just started with some double operand instruction. We s in fact, we came to this after discussing something about instruction format, right? And then we said an instruction format, in a sense, refers to two things. One is there is an opcode which indicates what the instruction must do, and then it must refer to, I said, operands or data, right? And then we said there can be no operands at all or there can be only one operand or there can be two operands. And then we took a specific example of two operand or double operand case. Now, we are we have seen the mode of referring to the operand or the data, the mode of addressing the data or the operand. So, now the operand field we must work out. Now, any processor will have a uniform instruction format. So, in case the processor accommodates no operand, single operand and double operand instruction, the instruction format must have provision for referring to two operands, right. And we are seeing now each of these operands can be referred to in one of several modes. So, now 
the details of this opcode evolves, uh, sorry, the details of the instruction format evolves like this. Really, uh, okay, we have the opcode, no doubt. Then, the operand part of it we will uh, specifically expand and see. So, this is the opcode part, leave that. Now, minimum we must refer to two operands, right. So, I will just call one as the source operand and other as the destination operand. Now, why do I call like that? Because you even this very simple example of add x y, okay, add x y. So, we are saying, uh, I mean if that is the format in which it is written, x is the source and y is the destination, meaning the 2 will be added and finally, the result will be placed somewhere, no? So, that will be the destination. So, according to this, x and y will be added and the result will be stored in the destination place, which means wherever originally y was, we will place it, that is what it means. Okay. Now, we are seeing the details. One is, uh, there are many ways in which this can be organized, but I will just say, the source operand will be referred to by saying what mode, in what mode we are referring to and then destination also the same way. Okay. And uh, we have seen that the register holds the data or register may hold the address or the address of the address or it may hold some address and so on so forth. Okay. These are special or general cases, slight variations. So, one way in which we can refer to data is, let us say what register we are referring to as source register or as destination register. What do you mean? Suppose a CPU has 8 registers, suppose a CPU has 8 registers and uh, CPU has say 16 different modes of addressing. So, it has 16 addressing modes. Now, here you may refer to any one of those 8 registers as source. Similarly, destination you may also refer to any one of the 8 registers. Then mode we may refer to any one of the 16 modes. Similarly, in the destination also any one of the 16 modes. There may be some restriction. Okay, Not all may be possible, some combinations may not be possible. Okay, Leave alone that. So, in other words, here this uh, <coughs> instruction has essentially three major fields. One field is opcode and the other one is a source field and the third is the destination field. And the source field and destination field respectively has two subfields. One is the mode subfield and the other is the register subfield. So, the subfield will have to have the code and then identify which of the, let us say, the register subfield must have one of eight different codes to identify which of the eight registers. Similarly, the mode subfield must have one of 16 different codes to identify which of the 16 modes it is referring to. Okay. Now, in the very first mode, let us say mode 0 is a register mode, the register itself holds the data, assuming. Okay. Then, uh, let us say both the registers you are just as, uh, assuming. Uh, that is both source and destination data, both are available in the CPU in two different registers. So, for instance, mode 0 is a register mode, right? that is what we have assumed and let us say register 1 holds 
the source data and the register 2 holds the destination data. So, the effect of this will be the contents of register 1 will be added to the contents of register 2. Okay. Register 1 contents will be added to register 2 and the result will be left in the destination that is in our case the register 2 that is what the end effect will be. right? Now, we must have uh, the appropriate code put in this subfield. So, for instance, let us say in this uh, instruction add x y. So, x is the source data source operand, y is the destination operand and we have assumed x in register, y in memory. Now, memory means we have to say there in memory that is some address is involved. right? Let me just arbitrarily say some R 4 is a register which will hold the memory address just arbitrarily I am saying that. Okay. So, y in memory is referred to by let us say register R 4. So, R 4 register R 4 holds the address of y. I think uh, we are familiar with this address of y. Let us say R 4 holds the address and x in register some register okay, I will just say R 1 is this particular register. Then say R 1 is the register holding x, R 4 holds the address of y and that particular address holds the data y that is what it is. Okay. So, R 1 is my source register. So, in this particular case second one hmm, R 1 is the uh, source register and R 4 is the destination register and R 1 holds the data. So, it is same mode, but in the case of R 4 it does not hold the address, but it holds the data. So, sorry A, uh, sorry R 4 does not hold the data, but it holds the address. So, this is another mode same mode 1. Okay. Now, let me repeat mode 0 is one in which register holds the data and mode 1 is the one which holds the address. So, this way and then whatever is the op code for add. Now, let us say some op code whatever it is say let us say 0 0 1 is the op code. Okay. So, 0 0 1 is some code which indicates add and then the source data is referred to this way where is R 1 holds the source data. Now, in our case it was x right and uh, mode 0 says R 1 holds the data. Then mode 1 says R 4 holds the address. So, from that particular address the uh, y data will be taken. So, this is how the instruction format and uh, uh, filling of the various subfields of the uh, instruction code. So, we have seen quite a few things and discussed. Now, uh, just to see whether we have a grasp of everything, let us work out a few problems. right? So, we will start with the simplest of the problems. Let us go to the chart. Okay. <laughs> the problem reads the format of a double operand instruction of a CPU and it is given uh, 12 bits okay, y that is the particular format consists of 3 subfields as uh, said earlier op code and then the rest of it is operand field and operand field has been divided into source operand field and destination operand field each of 4 bits. Now, suppose you have a code of 4 bits, what does it mean? Then 
you can have as many as 2 to the power 4 because we are talking about binary number we can have as many as 2 to the power 4 16 codes possible right that is a minimum uh, there are other ways also of coding now this is one in which all the things are packed that is there is no more more, more than uh, 2 to the power 4 is not possible good now we are seeing that that's that's what's given to us here then the problem reads if 12 double operand instructions so we have a two operand instruction 12 of them and 30 single operand instructions so single operand instructions there are 30 of them they must be implemented okay and it says if the opcode field must identify the three groups of n operand instruction now n in our case so far we have seen 2 and 1 now three groups what is the third group must be a no operand let us see calculate the total number of no operand instruction that can be implemented right so we have n as 0 for no operand 1 for single operand and 2 for double operand there there is one uh, catch here it says if the opcode field must identify the three groups if the opcode field must identify the three groups now this is important what do you mean by that we said the opcode field has four bits right and also we said 2 to the power 4 16 codes are possible now we are saying 12 double operand instructions must be accommodated and also 30 single operand instructions and we have to calculate the number of no operand instructions right now let us work, work out the details the double operand instructions 12 of them are there and the opcode field because it has 4 bits okay so we said 2 to the power 4 that is 16 codes are possible now this particular opcode field this particular opcode field must identify as the problem states must identify the three groups of n operand instructions right that is n is 0 n is 1 n is 2 so first of all we will take we said uh, we saw that there are 12 double operand instructions good out of these 16 codes 12 codes will be used to identify the double operand instructions okay now that so the opcode field will identify 12 of these 12 of these are gone so we are left with 16 minus 12 that is 4 codes that are available now right 4 remaining codes out of the total of 16 codes right now this opcode field must i uniquely identify good now uh, let's uh, go back to the chart and see we have considered already the 12 the 12 cases of double operand now we have to identify the 30 cases of single operand now in the case of single operand the operand field need not have two subfields correct there is only one operand that means only one data and what is that data it will be destination data agreed so this particular 4 bit is available now to extend the opcode that is what it means so now from the opcode subfield we are extending the opcode into the source subfield why because the 12 operand double operand instructions have already been identified and 12 codes of this 16 possible things have been used there we are only left with four codes so with four codes we have to identify 30 single operand and also no operand cases right now since for single operand we do not need two operand field that is two data field the source data field now can be used for extending the opcode so that is what we are going to do the source data is of size 4 bits now for each of the 4 opcode uh, 
four quotes we have been left with. Okay, for each of the four quotes we have been left with. Now taking the source field, source data field four also, right? For each of these, taking the source data field four bits. Okay, so with that, two to the power four, sixteen would be possible. So for each of these four quotes, agreed? Which means <coughs> for each of these sixteen single operand instructions can be identified. Which means of these four codes, we need two codes so that we can I accommodate this 30 single operand instructions. 30 single operand instructions. Now, what is possible with each of the code 2 to the power 4, which means 16. So, with two codes, we can accommodate as, much, as many as 32, right? single operand cases we can accommodate and uh, we have been asked to accommodate for 30 actually. So really with uh, two cores in the opcode field and making use of the source bit okay, field, source data field 4 that is 16 possible. right? So with just two of the opcode field we can accommodate 32 single operand cases. Actually, as I said, we are extending the opcode field into the source data field. Agreed? So, 32. Really, 30. So, two more remain, but then we cannot use. Why? Because of the condition. Let us see the chart again. The problem says the opcode field must identify the three groups. Right? And now we know that the opcode field in our case, the opcode field, two of the codes in the opcode field will identify the single operand. So now four codes have gone, sorry, out of 16 codes, 12 have gone for double operand. The remaining four, two are going now for the single operand. So we are left with four minus two, two codes. Okay, two codes are balanced. Two codes are available in the op code. Agreed. So now, in the case of no operand instructions, even the destination field can be used. Right. So now, <coughs> what do we have? Two codes in the op code field, which means. Let us see the chart. <coughs> you have two codes available for single operand and uh, for each of those codes 2 to the power 4, 16 would be possible, is it not? And then for each of these no operand, no? So this also can be used for no operand instruction. So, for each of these another 2 to the power 4 would be possible, right. So, we have two codes from this side and then uh, how many did we use the other one, uh, <coughs> two codes and uh, <laughs> how many did we use in there, let us see the chart again, two codes are there. Then for each of these codes we have 2 to the power 4, 16 it would be possible. For each of those 2 to the power 4, another 2 to the power 4. This is what we said in the destination because no operand. So 2 codes into each of it 2 to the power 4. Now this particular 4 comes because of the source field, source data field, right? Source data field. And for each of these another for this comes because of the destination door, destination data field. Agreed? Now, the these two codes will uniquely identify the no operand cases, right? So that is the important thing. Now, see that chart again. 
the there is a condition if the opcode field must identify the three groups now they will because 12 of the codes will identify the double operand cases two of the codes will identify <coughs> two of the op, uh, opcode thing will identify the single operand cases and the remaining two will identify the no op no operand cases okay now we find for each of those two codes this no operand cases this 12 uh, two will identify for each of these we have these so many possible combinations that are there so this is how you have to work it up